Break on that beat, going crazy. What's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at Hunter and Crosshair from the Star Wars The Black Series Bad Batch line. It's worth noting that these figures are not part of the Clone Wars line. When Hasbro redesigned the boxes, they started breaking the characters up into different lines. So these are actually part of their own brand new Bad Batch line of figures. So I'm sure at some point we'll be getting Tech and Wrecker. And my guess is that Wrecker is probably going to be a deluxe figure because he is much bigger than the other ones. Now these figures do share some parts in common, mainly the arms and the legs, the mid torso as well. You will notice that they have different upper chest pieces, shoulder pads, and helmets. And if you're not familiar with these characters, they're actually clones that were experimented on. And so something went wrong in the process and they came out with special abilities, but also they look much different than the other clones. Hence the name, the Bad Batch. So let's go ahead and get started with a close up look at Crosshair. For accessories, Crosshair comes with a helmet with an articulating rangefinder. You'll also notice that he has a visor and paint scheme that's unique to his character. He also includes a blaster which you can store in the holster on his belt, a sniper rifle, and a backpack. The backpack features a T-peg so that you don't have to worry about it spinning around. You can also store the sniper rifle on the backpack by either slotting it into place or pegging it in on the side. Crosshair's backpack also has a piece on the bottom which looks like a handle. I'm not sure if it's meant to be, but you can get him holding it. Articulation on this character is excellent. You get ankle pivot. You can spin right below the knees as well as the upper thigh so that you're going to be able to get him standing pretty much however you need him. The upper thigh swivel is needed so when you get him crouching down you're going to want to spin it a little bit so that the armor doesn't hit his waist. There's detail all throughout this figure. Even on the back you're going to see indentations and scratches and dents. So that really helps give it a battle worn look. His right shoulder pad has a large skull and the left shoulder pad has a piece that flares out to the side. The head sculpt is well executed. You can see he has gray hair. He also has a crosshair tattoo over his right eye, both of which really help differentiate this character from the rest. The helmet fits nice and snug on his head, so you're not going to have to worry about that falling off. Crosshair is also wearing a harness, which gets out of the way pretty nicely. If you want to spin the torso, it's not glued down in that area, so it's not going to hinder articulation much. Overall, I'm really impressed with this figure. Now let's take a look at Hunter. Hunter is the leader of the Bad Batch and he includes two different blasters. Unfortunately, there's no holster for the pistol, so you're not gonna be able to store that on the figure. On his left arm, the knife can be kept in a sheath that's attached to the gauntlet. He also comes with a backpack, which just like the one on Crosshair, features a T-peg, so you're not gonna have to worry about that spinning around. His helmet sort of mimics the markings on his face it also does not feature a rangefinder, and it has a more standard visor. And although he shares the same legs as Crosshair, you can see different paint deco on it. On the upper right thigh, you see a little scratch there, as well as near his knee on the left leg, there's a scratch. So that really helps differentiate the characters. And you know, if they're sharing parts, it's nice that Hasbro took the time to go ahead and do something to kind of set them apart. His right shoulder pad has a smaller skull. His left shoulder does not have the flared out piece like Crosshair has, and it's also a different paint scheme. Again, they did a great job with the head sculpt on Hunter. As you can see the face markings, as well as the red headband with the small skull on it. There's a lot of small details on both of these figures that you really need to have them in person to appreciate. Overall, I think they did a great job with both of these figures. The double ball jointed head allows for great articulation, as well as the legs and arms. The paint deco, having them differentiated, the different helmets, the head sculpts, all of that adds up to two great figures. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Bad Batch. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you for your support, and I'll see you on the next video.